what is excess and who is the arbiter what is too much world to live while you're thinking while you're thinking mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're not doing product placement but is excess a car that is such and such a price is excess a watch that costs so much? I'm trying not to, you know, put brands into this and so, you know, make make issues. But is excess uh, sunglasses? Uh, is excess uh, the kind of shoes? The kind of who? What is excess? Because this is the age old question of it's all relative, but there has to be a point where it's not relative. Anymore. So let me give you uh, an answer that uh, is going to really mess people up. Hmm. <laughs> We like messing people. Good. Saint Basil, hmm. uh, Bishop of uh, Cappadocia. Don't say it. The one I have to. This is like this. this don't, don't say it. This made me fall <laughs> backwards when I read this for the first time. Ugh. It made me feel like I haven't even begun to understand the gospel. Mm-hmm. Saint Basil, uh, he's a very big advocate for the poor. Very big advocate. He says, "You are a thief if you have an extra pair of shoes you haven't worn." And they're hanging out in your closet while your brother is out in the streets barefoot. To him, that is enough to merit me the title of I am stealing, I am a thief. That is excess. Okay, let's go ahead and suggest that that's a little bit too extreme, not properly balanced. Saint Basil was a monastic. He ended up dying actually very young uh, at the level of his age because he, like, he was so ascetic in his approach. Okay, he's an extremist. So be it. I'm getting ready for the fight now. Just no, I'm just kidding. But let's right. let's let's yeah. let's talk about someone else for just a second. Mm-hmm. My namesake is Saint Anthony. Okay, I love Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony, we all love him. Nobody wants to be like him though, because as soon as Saint Anthony heard the words of the gospel, if you want to be perfect, he said, "I want to be perfect. I want to be perfect." And so, what does he do? He sets himself up to make sure that his sister is taken care of, and he pours out any form of excess into her. He has no problem directing excess towards his sister. He makes sure that she is taken care of, that she is put into a community, that she has funds to make sure that she can survive. And not only survive, but live well. He takes all the rest, gives it to the poor, excessively. All excess is pointed towards the other, not towards the self. And where does he want excess? There's this beautiful passage in the life of St. Anthony. Hmm. St. Athanasius describes him as a bee that would go from one flower Mm. to another, collecting its nectar. Why? What was he doing? Before he went into the wilderness, St. Anthony lived among a community of ascetics that lived on the outskirts of the city. So there was already this idea of people living an ascetic life, but they weren't monastics because they weren't yet out into the wilderness. They were living on the outskirts of the cities. He would go from one elder to another. From this one, he would live with him and be discipled to him to learn patience. And once, once he mastered patience, he'd go to the next one. From that next one, he learned what it was to be compassionate and loving. Once he mastered it, he'd move on to the next one. He said he would move around from one person to another, collecting this nectar as if he was a bee. Why? What's the, what's the mentality? So to the extent where St. Athanasius actually describes this in the biography, and he says, they all looked at him and gave him the title of what? Philotheos. Him who loves God. Why would they give that title to a young man? Why wouldn't they be annoyed at this like ambitious young man who all he wants to do is one-up everyone? Why did they see something in him that was beautiful? All he wanted to do was adorn himself with virtues so that as a bride to the bridegroom, he may be able to offer the best that he could possibly give. Excess can apply at the level of virtue when it's directed to the self. Directed to others, no problem. Pour out excess into them. So, when you're really tempted <laughs> to be, forget, I, I can't believe I'm going to reference Andrew Tate. When you want to be the top G and all you want is to have the Bugatti and all you want is to have the Rolex, right? I'm very, 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 very sorry. That is simply not Christian. You pouring out that kind of money for the sake of you being able to say, look at what I possess, mm-hmm. look at me. This is the exact same vehicle that will get you from point A to point B and you're going to follow the traffic signals, just like everyone else, that watch that you look at, that you're so happy, is in the six digits, close to half a mil, if not more. <laughs> it's going to give you the exact same time Correct. as every other watch. Excess here is entirely sinful. 
but, and you'll be but, next to each other in the tomb, both of you. But, but, I, I, I've but, seen you holding yourself. No, but it's not And you want to scream. So let, let, <laughs> yes, let, okay. let, you know what, let, let me get all out. And no, then I'll have forgotten. So, and then, so, okay, go ahead. So Father Anthony <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like has the perfect answer uh, for those that can take that answer. Okay. Okay. So, so and, and it's it's a perfect answer. And I, I have think to go home and burn all my shoes. I, I, th yeah. I think <laughs> this is <laughs> give them to the poor. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think we all like need to take steps towards this. Um, but for those that you know their ears are itching, <laughs> they get like if I can mellow it down a bit, because Saint Basil, Saint no, Basil also great. says stuff like he says like you know. It is, like it's great to, and, and sorry to interrupt yeah. you I'm going to let you finish before I, before I, I go back at Father because I'm not going to let him get away it, just that fast yeah but, I'm trying to defend we're, him we're doing a podcast for people that are on their phones or laptops all of which cost thousands of dollars sure. to go on social media to watch right and be edified mm -hmm. and we can label any of the things I just said as excess so yes, I, yes, yes. and yeah, we all that, have closets that are filled no, 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 with no, that, it's 15 not, that's to 20 not pairs of shoes. That's not the point. That the point are is not unnecessary. Judgment. The point is, is, is what, what you're saying is lovely. And I'm going to let Father go. And, and God grant us, honestly, God grant us to lift. I would love one day yeah. to God grant me that ability to say, I, I don't need more than one shirt, one pair of pants, yes, one. Yes, yes. But, but let's be realistic to people who just want the next step because this is not okay. so this is this is for I those who even, seek the yeah. life of, of perfection I, and i think we we cannot dilute that I, I think including myself i should be seeking that life more and more right mm -hmm. uh, so i think the answer is great um but but many of us are maybe not able to even desire this life of perfection li living in the west and whatnot um i i can't tell you a number and a price and all these things it's nonsense right and also you know, you know, but I can tell you maybe concepts that could potentially help. Um, and also, like we have to understand context. Like so, so Saint Basil, Saint Basil was like, at this point there was a famine going on, mm. right? So, 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 so we have to also understand that. So Saint Basil sees a famine going on, and, and the poor, sorry, the rich, are keeping the money and they're not giving to the poor. He's freaking out and he's blasting them full force, and he has mm. the entire right to do so. And he says, even, he says crazier things even, right? Um, but I, I think, you know, if ever we would make it a point for us to remember a bit more the poor, I think we would do better. What do I mean by this? You know, if I look at, you know, again, the rich man and Lazarus, you know, every one of us would say, of course, if I had a beggar on my door on a daily basis, I would give him food. Of course. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not a big feat. I think, I think anybody would do that, right? But, but the problem is that because we live in the West, we don't see the real poverty that exists in the world. Asia, Africa, like Egypt, like you name it, right? So we, we don't see it. So what happens? We forget. And I'm the first one to forget. So, so I see Paul, I see Father Anthony, I see whomever, like we see people in church, you know, we have this type of car, okay? doesn't mean that we have the, the, the best types of car, but like, I mean, whatever, right? So you see things and you just do, right? You just imitate. But if we would think a bit more about those people that do exist, I think things would be a bit different. So, you know how, so how sometimes we go, uh, in, like let's say a poor village in, in any poor country, like imagine going to a poor village where people are, are really poor. What do we usually do? Do we dress up? Do we go with a thousand dollar suit type of thing? No, right? You go with clothes that fits them. You sleep like them. You eat like them, right? So I think that same idea is that we have to remember that those people exist, and and by doing so, maybe I can just as as a practice help myself a bit not to be attached to things. Meaning, um, let's say I want to buy a, a dining table, okay, and I, I'm going and I'm shopping for one. And, and I see one that costs three hundred dollars. Nothing costs three hundred dollars anymore, but whatever. Mm -hmm. okay, so three hundred dollars, right? And then I see another one that costs a thousand dollars. I like it a bit more, right? But I like the one at three hundred dollars very well before seeing this one. So it would be a good practice, I would think, for us to to 
to maybe consider, you know what? Maybe I don't need a thousand dollars. All I can afford that table. Maybe I don't need it. Maybe I can buy that one or two hundred dollars. But since I'm ready to expend that extra seven hundred, maybe I should give that to the poor. Maybe I should remember that this exists. So again, I don't need um, to seek the best of the best when it comes to material things. I think that would be a proper good step forward um, for most of us with the hopes of attaining what Father Anthony is speaking of. Mm -hmm. And forgive me, the, the point was not to be contentious, but really because I know people are going to be screaming at whatever they're watching on and saying, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the yacht or the Rolex or the unattainable, you know, Rolls Royce that costs a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But what is the practical too much? Is what I is what I mean. Like someone who wants an actual spiritual, you know, give me a spiritual teaching, but also like a, a training. Okay, mm -hmm. where I tell you, Father, forget rollers. Start, like, you know, clothing and and shoes and all that. That's all we can talk about. That I don't know how edifying it is. What's the point? How do I find the point in my life where it becomes excess? So, um. We did this exercise once. Because it's all, we can agree it's relative, right? Like someone who's worth a billion dollars, a True. Rolex is like a Timex for, for, for you and me, right? It's, it's relative in comparison to the fact that you're already at a category where everything about you is excessive. It's not relative in comparison to how much it costs to be able to feed a single person who's hungry. And this is where I think we have a problem. We think the standard moves up with us. The cost of what it's like for us to be Christian and to help those who are in need Forgive me, the, the, it, let's use Father's example for just a second. The $700 that you're willing to put on that table because this table is pretty, mm -hmm. right? That $700 when you're a billionaire or with that $700 when you're the average person who's making a decent salary mm -hmm. is still the exact same worth when it comes to what it's going to do for those who have nothing. And while I respect tremendously the fact that Father brought up this idea of us doing mission and visiting places that were like, Truly, the, ma the majority of the population is in poverty. You don't have to go very far. Go downtown. Mm -hmm. Go downtown today and you're going to see people who, anywhere and everywhere, they do not have the luxury that you have. So to go back to your question, what does this look like practically? Begin to teach your children from the youngest of age. That if they have a mm -hmm. basement that is filled with toys, mm -hmm. they have a basement that is filled with toys. If you tell your children, on your birthday, you're getting new toys. Grandpa, grandma, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, everyone's going to buy you new toys because it's your birthday. Here's what we're going to do. For every new toy that you receive, I want you to go through that entire closet or those bins of toys that you have, identify toys that you haven't played with, and we're going to go and give them to Salvation Army. We're going to go give them to a shelter that has children. And that way on your birthday, we're going to make room for the new toys that you get. What are you teaching your child? There is no reason to hoard toys. There is no reason to collect for the sake of collecting. I would encourage us as adults to do the same. You want to go buy yourself a new pair of shoes. Wonderful. I'm not saying don't buy it. But as you buy that one, go identify two pairs of shoes that you haven't worn in the last year and go give that to people who need it. Now we're going to sit there and say, but Father, you know, that, that's not easy. That's not very practical. No, it's super practical. No, what that hurts us? Super practical. But you'd be surprised. No, that because the average person today feels like unless I have six pairs of Jordans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that one's super practical. But that that in itself has another problem: is that I must have the newest, and you know that has its own issues. But that's not even my question. I, and I don't. Maybe I'm not just. I'm doing. I'm not doing a good job communicating it because it, it's it is a sensitive issue. But. My question is more so along the lines of there are many cars that can take me from A to B. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. You're telling me get the one, you know, that can get me there for the least amount. That would be the the spiritual, you know what I mean? That that's the spiritual lesson. Any shoe I could put on, there are many shoes that could be comfortable. You're telling me don't get the brand named one that I but I don't know that that's, is that really the, the, the idea yeah. here? Is that what we're going for? So, because so, so I, I, I thought, sorry, but I, I think we, we like, we have to understand that it's not uh, an one answer fit all type of mm -hmm. thing, right? So we are all of us at different levels 
in our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. All of us, uh, some of us are willing to to walk much more towards the, the idea of per perfection than, than others. So I think it's good for everyone to take a step forward. Um, some people, you know, they, they might see, well, I live in the West, I have to buy this and that, whatever. You, you, you don't have to buy anything. But as long as you are doing a small sacrifice, at least, you're taking a step forward, I think you're on the right track. And that's what I was trying to do with this example mm -hmm. and the $700. Mm -hmm. 